Hello, today we are going to hear a story by Bimba Landman called I Am Mark Chagall. I am Mark Chagall. You might be wondering why I painted flying goats and fish, green-faced fiddlers perched on roofs, houses in the sky floating upside down, lovers flying effortlessly over the city. I painted my world, my life, all the things I loved, all the things I dreamed of all the things I could not say in words. I painted my beloved Russia, my hometown Witzbik, the Jewish neighborhood where I grew up, and the way I saw everything as a child. I grew up in Witzbik, a small Russian farming town. I loved its goats and hens and cows, its small wooden houses, its men with violins, their songs and prayers, its lights of Shabbat, the Jewish Sabbath, the candles in the windows, at night, the sky would echo with hymns, Shalom Alikim, peace unto you. And angels would follow the head of each family home from the synagogue. Then the feast would begin, noodles, stuffed fish, meat with carrots, stewed fruit. After the last prayers were said, while my family dozed off, I would go sit on the roof. I loved it up there with the moon and my stars. There I would dream about what I might become, not a butcher like my grandfather, not a barber like Uncle Zussi, certainly not a shop assistant like my father, who hauled around heavy barrels of brine-soaked herring every day. No, I dreamed of a bright future, of becoming perhaps a famous musician or a dancer or a poet. These dreams made me happy like I was flying over Witzbik, over all of Russia. My parents, however, had different plans for me. They sent me to a school in the rabbi's house where the Jewish religion was taught. There I had to learn Hebrew and study the Torah, the sacred book, and listen to the rabbi's teachings. Often, however, I was distracted. Instead of listening, I watched the baby in its cradle the goat sticking its head through the window, and the hens pecking at the floor. When my studies at the Jewish school were over, I went to a local government school. I was nervous there, though, and I began to stammer. The words just wouldn't come out. Why do I have to go to school, I thought. I want to be wild, roll around in the grass, run, shout, and play. The only lessons I liked were geometry and art, where there was no need to talk. The lines and angles and colors said everything. I was good at drawing, and a friend said to me, you must be a real artist. That word seemed magical. An artist? Me? I begged my mother to let me study art. What, she said, for a Jew to want to be an artist is unheard of. Finally, she took me to an art teacher to ask his opinion. The teacher looked at my drawings in silence, thinking. And then he said, he think I might have some talent. That was all I needed to hear. I thought painting is as necessary as bread. It is my window so that I can fly into another world. I went to art school, but I could not paint like everyone else. I did not want to copy old sculpture and plaster castings. I wanted to paint memories from home. My grandfather's wagon, my mother, the goats. I invented colors and wondered why no one else painted in purple. I was searching for a different kind of painting. But what exactly? And I wondered, will I ever become a great artist? No one at home cared about my painting. My father said, go find a proper job. So for a while I worked for a photographer, but I couldn't stop thinking about painting. I went to a new art school in St. Petersburg with only 27 rubles in my pocket. I had to share a rented room. I even had to share my bed. I was starving and miserable, but my dream of painting 
kept me going. Then one day I was arrested for not having a work permit. In jail though, I lived well. I had a bed to myself, food to eat, and a place to draw in peace. After two weeks in jail, my life continued, the same as before, a job here and there, painting school, cold, uncomfortable nights. Every now and then, I would return to Witzwick for the holidays. There, waiting for me, was my own room where I could paint all day and all night long. And Bella was there. Bella, my sweet girlfriend. She brought me cakes and fish and flowers and filled my room with love. She floated over my canvases for a long time and called me her twinkling star. I painted her all the time. But what future could I offer for Bella? How could I survive in Russia where no one bought my art? I roamed the streets and prayed, show me the way. I want to see a new world. Suddenly, I saw the city break like the strings of a violin. I saw the people of Witzbeck flying in the sky over the roofs, and I saw colors spilling everywhere. Then I knew my art needed to fly, to fly free like in my vision. I decided to go to Paris where Van Gogh and Picasso painted. Perhaps in Paris, my art would be understood. I said, Goodbye, Bella. I will come back one day and marry you. Paris, what a city for a painter. Many artists live there, artists from all over the world. I could hear sculptors chiseling away at their marble, musicians strumming their guitars. Other painters like Magellani invited me to see their work. And the poet, Alapaner, came to see me. He read his poems to me and said, how odd and beautiful your paintings are. Did he say that because I didn't use perspective? Because I turned my canvases upside down? Because I painted on bits of tablecloths and sheets and shirts? Or was it my improbable colors, my flying goats and cows? I began to write poetry because it was, natu it was as natural as breathing. The Paris poets liked my work and called me a poet painter. To me, Paris was light, color, freedom, the sun, the joy of living. I painted there as if I were dreaming and I always painted Witzbeck. I painted the colors of my memories and suddenly a pleasant fiddler, Bella or snow covered wooden house would appear. My entire family, the whole of Witzbeck lived inside my paintings. I'd say to them, in my mind, your lives and actions have become my art. A friend helped me to take my paintings of Witzbeck to an exhibition. He paraded them through the streets of Paris on a simple hand cart. At the exhibition, many visitors saw my paintings. There was always someone who would stand in front of my paintings and ask, why doesn't he paint like the rest? Why does he make a huge donkey and paint him green? But many of the visitors liked my painting for what they were. In 1914, someone even took my paintings to Berlin for my first one person show. There, I finally began to make a name for myself. Something troubled me though. I looked at other painters' work and I saw colors of gloom and foreboding, like something bad was about to happen. When I traveled through Germany by train, going back to Witzbeck to see Bella and my family, I saw the reality with my own eyes. Europe was getting ready for war. The war came to Russia like a cold biting wind. I began to draw soldiers, the wounded on stretchers, men and women with sad faces, but I also painted Bella. Our wedding, our little daughter, Ida. After three long years of war, the Russian revolution turned my country all upside down. Like one of my paintings, to celebrate the first year of the revolution, I was asked to make posters 
Soon my brightly colored animals were paraded all over the city. I looked at the smiling faces of the children and the workers and was sure they understood my art. But the Russian leaders did not understand me. They asked more questions. Why is the horse flying in the sky? Why is the cow green? What does this have to do with Russian politics? I let them grumble and went to Moscow with Bella and Ida to paint a new Jewish theater. Here are the blank walls, said the director. Do whatever you want with them. For 40 days, I worked until the walls, the curtains, and the ceiling were covered with paintings. A musician, a clown, a dancer, a dreaming poet, and all of the peasants of my Witzbeck, including Bella, Ida, and myself. In Moscow, I also taught orphans of war. These children who had seen their world collapse took to the colors and created drawings of fantasy and poetry. I was delighted to see that they understood that the world inside of us at times is more real than the world that is outside. I enjoyed teaching, but when it was time to be paid, I was always told, come back tomorrow. Once again, I had no money. Then a friend in Germany wrote to tell me that my paintings were selling there, so we moved to Germany. Next, a friend in France wrote and said, you are famous here. So we moved again, this time to Paris. There, I began to paint pictures from the Bible. I painted angels and the stories of Jacob and who slept on a stone and of David, the musician's king. I also painted light and flowers and was happy in Paris with Bella for many, many years, but not forever. The second World War broke out in Europe in 1941, so we took a ship to America. During the journey, I wondered if the silent stars above could already see my future, my life in America, my return to France. After the war, the musicians of my paintings in Nice, my stained glass in Jerusalem, Chicago, New York, my mosaics, yes, perhaps the stars could already see my entire life traced out on the earth like a picture by Marc Chagall. This is a timeline of his life. The end.